It's an incomplete one. It's a very specific one. It's a federation of nation states. That's a expression popularized by, uh, by Jacques Delors, the, the founder of Montreal. But this has to be said because we are not talking about something totally new, a kind of messianic perspective to attain. The federation is there. The European Central Bank, for example, is a federal institution, which, by the way, played a very, very important role in the ongoing crisis. It is a federal institution. So, first point, we are in federation, but of course, it's an incomplete one, and it's also a very complicated one, because it's a federation of nation-states with tensions uh, between this nation-state. This is not an empire, this is a federation of nation-states, uh, based on a non-domination principle, which means that we need little compromises to make a decision, which is very, very difficult, especially in the context of the Eurozone crisis. That was my first remark. I have two or uh, three left. Second remark, precisely under the pressure of events, they have been stepped further in the federal direction. Uh, you've mentioned Greece. Uh, in the treaty, the European treaties, there was what has been called the no bailout clause. No bailout clause meant if ever a country is in big financial trouble, it won't be bailed out, it won't be saved. Why is that? Because if we had said in advance that it would be saved, this country would, would be saved, there would have been a kind of uh, hazard, there would have been less incentive for this country to be serious with the discipline. But when the crisis happened, some countries have been helped, have been saved. Uh, Three countries are on the program, Greece, Portugal, and Ireland. The ECB acted to help other countries, including Spain. So there has been a move towards more solidarity from the EU level, and in compensation, a move towards more follow-up, more uh, monitoring from the EU level, meaning monitoring better what happens to prevent such crises to happen again, uh, monitoring the, the implementation of the national economic policies. And this is the revision of the stability and growth pact and the, also the fiscal compact we are ratifying at the moment and the Irish people decided to ratify uh, yesterday. So, step further into the federal uh, direction. But still, third remark, challenges ahead. Will we go further or not? Because apparently the situation is still very difficult, and then some more moves uh, are on the table. And uh, I would probably see if one of these three moves would be adopted by the end of June, because there will be a very important European Summit Council at the end of June. So, what about these three possible potential other federal moves? The first one is what has been called the Banking Union. The banking union is proposed to address the banking dimension of this crisis. This crisis the Europe is facing is not only a sovereign debt crisis, meaning a crisis provoked by the states and their difficulty to issue their bonds to get finance. It's also a banking crisis with opacity in the situation of the banks and necessity to help them. And then, of course, these banks have been helped already, including by the ECB. But apparently, some more help is necessary, is needed. And a decisive step further, that would be a federal one, would be to have a kind of European scheme to help banks even more massively, a kind of guarantee fund, or a collective guarantee fund for the deposits. And in compensation, there would be more control, more European control, on the bank in terms of supervision. That is the first uh, possibility. The second possibility is the so-called fiscal union. So we have a monetary union, we could have a banking union, but the third option is a second possibility is a fiscal union. So I'll be very brief, fiscal union is the fact to issue commonly our debt, our, our bonds, to guarantee our debt commonly and then to issue common bonds. So euro bonds, 
uh, your BLC redemption form. You, you may come back on this later. So this is the first option. And of course, in addition to compensation, there will be even more control from the EU. And it's under discussion. What has been called the two pack? Two pack is a pack of two regulation which will allow the EU to control ex ante and not ex post the definition of the national budget. And what is on the table, including adopted by the European Parliament already, is a combination to go further between the two pack on the one side and redemption funds on the other. Kind of fiscal union. Third possible option, economic union. Because by the way, we have formed an economic and monetary union, the EMU, but from the start, it was not a balanced union. The monetary pillar is very strong, solid. It has even been reinforced by the crisis, but the economic union, for obvious reasons, was very weak. So what is at stake here is not only to reinforce the surveillance, it's kind of negative aspects to monitor to have a bigger surveillance of the national economic policies. It would be to have a more positive approach, meaning in terms of coordination of these national economic policies. That would be a kind, if not a federal approach, but at least a more collective, a, a more, a more uh, uh, coordinated approach of these economic, social policies. But then I, I'll conclude by my fourth remark. I, I, I had said that there were important objection to this. The, the whole uh, dimension of the crisis is a, a, it's first a crisis of confidence, but it's also a problem, a crisis in terms of legitimacy. That is the difficulty, is to combine the actions of nation state within this federation we already have. If we want to complete partly this federation. So of course we have issues in terms of legitimacy because it's not easy to uh, have more coordinated national economic policy. It's not easy to have more solidarity from the EU and in return, more control from the EU. We can see that public opinions all around Europe can express growing concerns about what has been made. It has been made, but what has been made in terms of solidarity has been criticized by some public opinions, for example, in Germany. What has been made in terms of uh, implementing national structural reforms. Uh, the compensation for this European solidarity has been also criticized a lot. And then we, we, we have this major issue of, uh, of legitimacy from the public opinions and also legitimacy from the member states. To finish on this, and we may elaborate a bit more uh, further, the fiscal compact has been signed by only 25 countries. So the UK and the Czech Republic decided not to sign it. It has been ratified by four countries, but it could enter into force with only 12 ratifications from the Eurozone and the United States. What I mean is that when dealing uh, with a move towards federalism, we may and we should probably envisage options concerning not all of the 27 countries, sometimes not all of the 17 countries, but maybe groups of countries on the basis of reinforced coordination, cooperation. This is also an option to combine this need for legitimacy and maybe this kind of more integrated, if not federal, European Union. Thank you. That's the case today, so I'm sorry to boringly predictable uh, to you. Um, but Britain, of course, did not enter the euro. And there is currently a, to my mind, fascinating piece of historical revisionism going on among those people in Britain who said we should have joined and are still trying to sway the great republic that they were right at a time when circumstances would appear to be proving the opposite. Uh, that having been said, 